Hey guys, I'm Mike Atterbury and I am a multi six figure entrepreneur and I started out as a safety manager in the construction industry, left that nine to five, decided the corporate life was not for me and jumped off the cliff into self-employment and entrepreneurship. And for the past six years, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of money. I've uh, learned a lot of hard lessons, been through a lot of failure, a lot of different circumstances and have been able to come out on the other side of that and now I am an active real estate investor and I run a video marketing company for real estate agents that's on track to do six figures in the first year. I just want to get on here. I want to share some of the most important concepts and principles that I've come to learn from either going through tough situations, from mentors, from seeking information on the internet, books, whatever it has been. I want to go over some of the basic things that have helped me in my first six years as an entrepreneur and hopefully speed up and expedite the time to your guys' results and help you guys skip some of the wasted time that I had to experience going through some of those things myself. So I'm gonna give you principles or concepts that have helped me through what I would call the beginning stages of my entrepreneurial journey. And I'm gonna save the best ones for last so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. So for starters, one of the things that killed my potential and my ability to make enough income to be successful early on in my entrepreneurial journey was that I was dealing with a really low profit margin business. So the key here is to choose Choose a business with high profit margins. So when I explain my entrepreneurial career, I'm going to start kind of where I think my career started after my role as a safety manager, but basically my whole life in college and in high school, I had always been working for people on my own. I never liked having a boss. I was mowing lawns. I was doing landscaping. I was finding odds and end jobs. I was doing whatever I could to not have to work in a corporate environment and to be self-sufficient and to make my own money. So I had already had that little spirit of entrepreneurialism. And as I left my career as a safety manager in the power line industry, I jumped into a partnership with a gentleman that I met on social media and we started a retail company. Now this particular company was called builtforthehunt.com. We built this company really similar to the bodybuilding.com model. And our intention was to sell supplements and fitness products and bring the fitness lifestyle to the hunting and outdoors community. And the problem that I came to realize with that business after three years of struggling to make enough income for us to pay ourselves was that our net profit margins were probably sub 10% on the good days or the good months. So at a 10% profit margin, it's really difficult to even make enough money you have to do massive, massive revenue for that 10% to be large enough for you to be able to pay yourself and to actually make a good personal income. And the same thing goes for your employees to be able to pay employees, to be able to build and scale. It's really difficult in a company like that, especially where we didn't take on investors. We were just like doing this like all ourselves. Basically we were bootstrapping it for most of the time. We took small investment in like the second or third year, but we were able to get that company up to multi six figure revenue, even close to 300,000 in revenue. But the problem was the margins were so low that I think we probably never paid ourselves more than a total from the entire three years that we were in the company, maybe $5,000 total from that three years. And it was a lot of blood, sweat, equity, elbow grease. And the lesson that I learned there, and when I got to into the stage of hiring mentors and getting proximity to mentors, I learned this, but the problem was the margins were just too small. Uh, to put it simply, they were just too small. And what I've learned from my mentors, one of my mentors, Chris Crone, taught me this at his first event that I went to, I learned that 25% is his minimum. And I think that's a great metric. And for me, it's been true so far in my own entrepreneurial journey since I've started to implement that belief that 25% net margin is what you have to have for a business to really be scalable and profitable and to really set you up for success going forward in the future with the business. So it's just the whole journey is easier if you can get into a business with a high profit margin. So the profit margins like that are, they're certainly capable in real estate. They're certainly capable in a lot of sales position. They're certainly capable in infopreneurship and coaching and mentorship. There's a lot of different industries or businesses that you can start, even service-minded businesses like my video marketing business where the margin can be as high as 40, 50, 60%. So that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that cost me the most time. Um, even though those three years of grinding through that company were very important and I learned a lot of really nuanced, detailed lessons and skills, honestly, that are going to help me in the future. But
but that's one thing that I would say is choose a high profit margin business. Another important lesson that I learned that is kind of along the same lines uh, is when you're choosing a business, you have to have your target market or your ideal client in mind. When you're looking at business, potential business opportunities and business models to get into, one of the things you have to keep in mind is who are my clients and do they have enough money to pay for this product and service? Because what you want to do is you want to have a business model that provides a service to people with money who can actually afford to pay you for that service, right? Like if you go make a luxury high-end service and then try to sell it to people with a teacher salary, right? It's, it's going to be difficult for them to pay or to afford. And in turn, you're going to have problems getting leads. You're going to have really struggle to get sales or close sales for your products or services. So when you create a business or you get into business or you have different business ideas, try to craft a product or service or a business that serves someone who has money or that can afford to pay you for that product and service. And if you're gonna design a product or service for someone who has a low income, it needs to be a very cheap product or service and the value needs to be in the cheap price, in the savings, not necessarily in the premium of the product, right? So that's one thing I would say is keep in mind who your ideal client is and choose to do products or businesses or services for people who actually have money to pay you. A great example of this is what I do now with video marketing, where we charge three, four, five thousand dollars a month to brokers, realtors. These are our ideal clients are doing half a million or more in annual revenue. So for them, it makes sense to spend that much in the budget for video marketing to produce leads for their business. This next one is more of a realization that I had, but at a fundamental level, um, and most of you probably understand this, but for some of the beginners that are just getting into business. I wanna make this really easy for people, but one of the things that I've realized that just really simplifies business for me is the concept of you're just, all you're doing in business is you're looking for discrepancies in what something is worth. And what I mean by that is you can make money anywhere you can find a discrepancy in what the going rate for something is versus what somebody will pay for it, right? So if you can hire labor that creates a product or a service and fulfills for $20 an hour, Hour, but you can charge a client $50 an hour for that service, the discrepancy is your profit margin and your profit margin is your business. So really business simplified is just about finding discrepancies in what somebody will pay for a product or a service. Or for me, sometimes that's real estate. If I'm flipping houses, I can find a deal that a seller is willing to sell at a discounted price. And then the discrepancy is the amount above that that I can list the property for when I renovate it and sell it. So business is really simple if you're just looking for discrepancies, looking for opportunities opportunities that provide a financial or monetary discrepancy in a product or service. This is another important one and one that really, for me, is really closely tied to real estate because when I went from my retail company and things were really rocky with that, I went through a lawsuit with a partner and basically we split up and the company wasn't doing well and I ran it for a little while and decided it's not what I want to do. This isn't working. I've spent a lot of time and money doing this. So I'd always been interested in real estate and I had had an inclination to get into real estate. So when I started and got into real estate, I jumped in, I started flipping houses. I flipped my first house, made a lot of money and just went gung ho and thought, okay, this is the route. This is what I got to do. Like I made two years worth of a salary at my previous job in one flip or one property. I knew that right away that real estate was really important. So when I got into real estate and started flipping houses and started learning about real estate, every, you know, you hear a lot about passive income. You will hear passive income thrown around a lot. Like, oh yeah, you get to build up all these rental portfolios, you can use other people's money and you can build up all this passive income or it just gets thrown around the, the entrepreneurial space or like the self-development space a lot. It's like passive income, passive income, passive income. And when I got into real estate, that's all I heard is like passive income, passive income. So my first couple of years, and I still do this to some extent, but I was using other people's money to find deals and make money off of those deals in real estate. And what I realized now in real estate and a lot of my other businesses is before you can build up that portfolio of rentals, or you can build up a portfolio of investing that pays you enough residual income or passive income, really you have to start with focusing on your active income and you have to have a high profitable monthly active income. Um, and if you don't do that, you'll never have enough cash or profit to be able to put into some of these rental investments that 
or business investments or stocks or equities or whatever the investment that's going to create passive income. So I guess what I'm trying to say is for me, I figured out that the focus, especially in the early years, must be on the active income by creating a massive, consistent, active income and dependable income stream through your primary focus that gives you the cash and the profits to then invest into projects or to rental properties or to businesses or to stocks or equities or whatever. They're going to produce residual passive income and that will support your lifestyle or then take care of you financially and give you that freedom. But that passive income really is going to be hard to get in the beginning if you don't support it with highly profitable, active, consistent, dependable, active income. Like you have to make a lot of cash in the beginning years. Your focus should be on putting your energy and your work and your labor and your focus into a machine that makes you a high active income. So I just want to share that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of entrepreneurs like me that are like trying to start out. Well, I want to, I want the passive income that pays my bills and I can go and travel and do whatever. Problem is you can do that, but it's really, it's a lot easier if you just create a really high active income. This is a really important one too, that'll save you guys tons of time and tons of money if you implement it. But one of the things that I learned really from real estate initially was that cheap labor is not worth it. And when it comes to labor, you get what you pay for. And what happens was when I got into flipping houses, there were some things with the house that I couldn't do or didn't feel comfortable doing myself. Even though I did have some construction experience, there were some things I just didn't want to do or wasn't licensed or I didn't have the expertise to do. So I hired out things like electricians, plumbers, handyman tasks, things like that early in my flipping journey. And what I figured out really quickly is that trying to save with a handyman or trying to hire the cheapest labor or the cheapest contractor in my case personally it always came back to bite me and never did i have a good experience with a cheap laborer or the cheapest contractor or the best uh, cheapest bid on any of my flip projects so that's one thing that i learned and one thing i've implemented when it comes to my hiring and the contractors and the people that i'm willing to work with is i don't try to go the cheapest route anymore i really try to focus on that more upper intermediate level when it comes to quality and service and what they cost and just in general, the type of businesses that you deal with. When you get into the cheap contractors and handymen and trying to save money, what you realize is a lot of those guys, they're not great business people. They're good at their job. They're good at their trade, but they're not good business people and they're not professional. They don't show up all the time. They don't show, sometimes they don't show up at all. I've lost money to contractors leaving without finishing the job and I paid them up front and I shouldn't have. A lot of lessons with, in regards to trying to hire and save money on labor and contractors. So that's one thing that I would be wary of even um, in a business or real estate, regardless which area we're talking about is cheap labor, cheap contractors. When it comes to labor and contractors, you get what you pay for. So this next one, without this next one, it will absolutely kill you your business and you will be in survival mode basically for the entirety of your business career if you do not figure this out. But the number one thing that a business needs to survive, excluding high profit margin like we already discussed, excluding good labor, the number one thing that a business needs to not just survive but to thrive is an abundance of leads. Whatever you do, whatever your product or service is or your business is, you have to have a strategy to make sure that that company or that business or product or service has an abundance of leads and has abundance of people who are prospects for the potential sale or purchase of that product or service. So if you don't have steady lead flow or if you can't find a lot of leads, you don't have a business. I mean, it's just that simple. That's one of the most important things that I've tried to focus on when choosing a business to get into or choosing a business model or, or a strategy or business plan is, okay, how are we gonna get leads? Are we going going to run Facebook ads? Do people actually want to buy this stuff? Do we have a large demographic that this product or service relates to? Are we solving a problem for a lot of people? Like where are these people coming from? Are they coming through, like I said, digital ads? Are they coming through organic social media? Are they coming through an email list? Um, can we partner with someone who has the customers that we want? Um, these are all things to keep in mind, but the biggest point here and really the, to put it simply is you just need, you have to have tons and tons of leads for your business. You, you cannot have a business that like just a 
few people want their product or service or a business where it's really hard to find leads. You have to have an abundance of leads for your business. Uh, and that's where video and marketing for us come into play um, so heavily is that, and that's what exactly what we do is we help people find leads for their business through organic social media video. Um, so whatever that is for you, make sure when you start a business, you have a plan and a strategy to implement to create an abundance of leads for your business. Okay, this is the last concept that I wanted to share with you guys and probably one of the most important. This is one that I heard from one of my mentors and I'm sure he heard it from someone else. But when you are operating a business and you're trying to sell a product, you're trying to market, the idea is to create a really great product that markets itself. And you know, the less great your product is, the more you have to market. And after marketing, then you have to be really good at sales and you have to get people to buy your product, right? Well, one of the things that makes sales and business really easy for people is if they know, like, and trust you. For me personally, this is one of the the things that I leverage the most when it comes to creating leads or to building business opportunities or ways to make money or income it is to create relationships with people where they know, like, and trust me. And obviously there's three parts of this, right? They have to know you. So how are they going to know you? Well, they have to be aware of that you exist for one. And how are they going to do that? Are they going to read a book that you've written? Are they going to see, do they know you personally? Are you a friend or family? Do they see you on social media? And I think that's probably one of the biggest ones is people discovering you through social media. They're becoming aware of who you are and what you do through social media. Um, so they have to know you, right? They have to become aware of who you are. They have to know that you exist, that you have a product or service that you do. So that's the first part. They have to like you, right? So when people come to your social media pages or they meet you out on the street or they meet you at an event or they become aware of you somehow, they run into you somewhere or a friend tells them about you, at some point they're gonna make a decision on whether they like you or not, And right? And when it comes to liking you, it's kinda like they say like 50% of the people are gonna hate you and 50% of the people are gonna love you. It's kinda like Trump, right? Like half America hates him, half of America loves him. So just expect that when it comes to the potential millions and millions of people that could see your product or services. Half of them are gonna choose to like you, half of them aren't. So you got no, you got the like, and then you got the trust, right? So of those people that know they found out about you, they made a conscious decision or maybe a subconscious decision that, hey, I kind of like this guy or hey, I kind of like this business or this product or service. They have to trust you. And uh, I think one of the main ways that people can trust you is just social proof. And social proof can come in different forms. You know, one of the most powerful form is word of mouth, a word of mouth referral, someone who, who you do such a great job for that they tell someone else on their own without you asking. That's the best and most powerful way to build social proof and trust Another way would be reviews or social proof videos or testimonials on your website or people posting pictures with your product or service on the internet or social media. So those are the things that encompass the trust part or maybe you just spend a lot of time personally building a relationship with someone until they really, they're just like, hey, this guy shows up. He has high integrity. He says what he's gonna do. I really trust this person. But that's, for me, this one concept is probably the most important and the one that I am most mindful of in my day-to-day -day business and my own when I'm out uh, trying to create opportunities for business or income or making money is people have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. So I hope these concepts help you guys. I haven't been doing a lot of YouTube videos, but this is going to be one of the first ones that I start putting out regularly. And like I said, my name is Mike Atterbury, and I hope to be one day a multi seven figure earner in the real estate space, in the entrepreneurial space. And I have a lot of ambitions for my personal growth, my health, my wealth, my relationships. And I hope this video helps you. I hope the future videos help you. If you liked it, leave a comment. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend that you think it might help who maybe is just getting into business. Till next time, guys, I will see you. Thank you for watching.